Hey everybody, it's me Joe and I want to welcome you back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about Christmas. And specifically, I'm going to talk about a Christmas miracle. Wow! Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you eight questions and then I'm going to tell you the story of a Christmas miracle that, that is a true story. Then you try your best, listen carefully, and try to hear uh, the answers to the eight questions. All right? And then at the end of the video, I will give you the answers. All right? Also, at the end, there'll be a secret code. I hope you check it out and send it to me on Instagram. Don't send it down below. Shh, it's top secret. <laughs> All right? And then I'll send you something special because I like to keep you learning. Uh, if you're new to this page, my name's Joe, and I teach English to foreign students at a university in Canada. And if you want to keep learning from me, all you have to do is subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that notification bell down below. Alrighty, let's get to the questions. Here we go. Number one. What year did World War I begin? Number two, what city did Germany come close to invading? Number three, true or false, only the Germans dug and used trenches. Four, what is the area between the trenches called? Number five. How many British and German troops were involved in the Christmas truce? Number six. True or false, the soldiers exchanged gifts during the truce. Number seven. What sport was played by the soldiers? And number eight, what was the name of the founder of the German Youth Hostel Association? All right, so those are all the questions. Now I'm going to tell you this story, and it's an amazing, amazing story. All right, now certainly all of you have heard about World War I. It started in the middle of 1914, and there were many, many uh, countries involved in this war, but this story, the main countries that I'm going to talk about are England, Germany, and France. Okay? Uh, early on in the war, Germany had early success. They invaded France, and they made it to the outskirts of Paris. They didn't actually get into Paris, but they came very close. But then French troops and other troops pushed them back. All right, so they came close to Paris, but didn't get in. Then they got pushed back. And then both sides, the Allies and the Germans, they dug trenches. All right, so trenches means a long hole in the ground where soldiers can hide while they're looking at and perhaps shooting at the enemy. So lo these long trenches were dug all the way from uh, the North Sea on the shore all the way down to the border with Switzerland. So they were for, you know, hundreds of kilo kilometers, these trenches. Uh, the two trenches were not very far apart. So you had the British and the French on one side and you had the Germans on the other side and they weren't that far apart. The land in between them <laughs> was very, very deadly. It was filled with uh, shell craters, like big holes in the ground, broken trees, and unfortunately, lots of dead bodies. Uh, the, the, what they called that place is no man's land. So no man can be safely in that area because both sides could shoot. All right, so it's very, very deadly. Nobody goes there, nobody crosses there. Okay? Um, one thing, another thing about these trenches being so close is that 
it was easy for the soldiers on one side to communicate with the soldiers on the other side. They could just yell and easily be heard. Uh, they often used English to communicate because many of the German soldiers had been living in England before, the world, before world War I began. So they were familiar with the language. All right. Things they would ask about is uh, just maybe uh, football leagues, the scores of different soccer games and things like that because they're familiar with British soccer games. Um, they also might just discuss the weather. Just when they're bored and nothing's going on, they just yell over, even though they're close together. Okay, so the war had been going on for a few months when Christmas came, De December came, and the official order <laughs> that came down from the generals on both sides was that no truce, there was no Christmas truce, there was no ceasefire, all right? It was, we are at war and we are continuing. If you see an enemy soldier, you shoot him, all right? But <laughs> on Christmas, uh, the, the Germans, they put up Christmas trees and they put candles on it. They sang and they sang Christmas carols. The British that are just, you know, a short distance away, they also sang carols to try and, you know, maybe outdo the other side. Like, hey, we're better singers. Let's say. So there was a bit of competition, but it was a friendly competition. And then <laughs> a few brave, they don't know exactly how it started, but a few brave officers and soldiers stepped out of the trenches and walked into the middle of no man's land on both sides. They said, don't shoot. We're tired of fighting. Merry Christmas, right? They'd say, Merry Christmas, Englishmen, and they'd say, Merry Christmas. And so people from both sides got out and they came together. They came together in the middle of no man's land. And it, it was an absolute miracle that this could happen during a war. Two days before, you might be trying to shoot and kill somebody. And today, uh, Christmas Day in 1914, they were standing together talking together, laughing together, shaking hands. Amazing. And the other thing was uh, they also exchanged presents. Now, this doesn't mean that they wrapped up gifts and put them in pretty bows. They would just have perhaps food, chocolate, uh, tobacco, cigarettes, alcohol, and some souvenirs such as uniform buttons and maybe hats that they would share with the other side just just for fun just just for some camaraderie fraternization um approximately 100,000 soldiers british and german troops were involved in this unauthorized troop uh, unauthorized truce we don't know the official numbers because it was not officially sanctioned by generals so how many troops got out and came across? We don't know, but they estimate about 100,000. So imagine 100,000 soldiers just decided, that's enough, no more fighting, no fighting today. I don't care what the government says, I don't care what the general says, I just don't want to fight. I love that idea, I love the humanity of that idea. Also, while they're out there, recently killed soldiers were retrieved, right? Right. They picked up their dead and brought them back to their trenches, and then they held church services. But get this, they held joint church services. So there was British, French, Germans together in a service, in like a church service for the dead. That's amazing, all right? Another thing that happened was that some football games were played. Now, uh, historians, historians are saying there probably weren't official rules <laughs> soccer games, football games, because the land would have been torn up and debris everywhere, so they didn't have a full soccer field to play on. But they would have kicked the ball back and forth to each other just to play, just for fun. Amazing.
all right? And many incidents of this were recorded in letters home. It wasn't on official reports sent to the general because the general didn't want to hear about it. But, you know, soldiers writing back to their mothers saying, yeah, we played, we played soccer together. And then one German soldier, a guy named Richard Sherman, he, after the war was over, uh, he thought about how amazing it was when people got together, there could be peace and camaraderie and love and friendship if we just forgot about the governments. So he started the German Youth Hostel Association in 1919. That's after the war. Because he loved the idea of people getting together, becoming friends with people around the world maybe they never met before. And if any of you have traveled, you know a youth hostel is a great place for that. All right, so those are all the answers. You, you've done a great job. Those are all the questions. You're doing amazing if you've made it this far. Let me give you the answers now, okay? Question number one, what year did World War I begin? 1914. What, did, what city did Germany come close to invading? That was Paris. True or false, only the Germans dug and used trenches? That's false. Both sides did it. Number four, what is the area between the trenches called? That is no man's land. Number five, how many British and German troops were involved in the Christmas truce? truce? About 100,000. Number six, true or false, the soldiers exchanged gifts during the truce? True. Number seven, what sport was played by the soldiers? That was football. And number eight, what was the name of the founder of the German Youth Hostel Association? That was a man named Richard Sherman. All right. Okay, fantastic. You made it this far. So if you have the secret code that I want you to send to me on Instagram is peace on earth. Okay, peace on earth. You send that to me on Instagram and I'll know that you made it this far and you are a very hard working student. Now, what do you think of these pictures of me in my home? Ho, ho, ho. So what is Christmas like in my house? We have a tree that we decorated. And of course, here's some presents. Looks like Santa brought me something. It's under the tree. I bought something for my daughter, Rachel, of course. We watched lots of movies over the break. Here's our tree at nighttime, looking beautiful. And here's a last cute picture of me. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned a lot. And if you want to keep learning, I'm going to post some other things right here. <laughs> and I uh, hope you can click on them and keep listening to my voice. Check out another shirt. See how long my beard is. All right, that's it for now. Until next time, Merry Christmas.